Today we are going to work on a few of the things we didn't get to get finished on the last time we worked on the Corolla. Firstly, I'm going to see if I could wire up the Protronics blaster coil. And then I can also use the signal from here to communicate with our Protronics ignition box. And then run wire into the cab into my sweet tachometer that I got. And then if I can, I'll work on plumbing the, the fuel lines. So let's get started, shall we? Stop it, we're not saying that on camera. Okay. Alright, it's transferred it transferred over really quickly. Uh, I could probably clean this up with like a wire brush and steel wool. I wanted to run the entire Protronic system start to finish. It's carbureted, there's no timing curve, so really the best thing I have here is air flow and spark. And so I want to make sure I have the most amount of spark possible on that. We'll continue on with this and maybe I can hit it with a wire brush and clean it up and uh, we'll keep going. The Protronic system is pretty great because it gives you these tabs to go onto your uh, blaster coil and they give you all the connections you need. I mean, obviously these are not like the best connections, but uh, the cool thing is they give you little uh, receivers in your bag of your Protronics kit to plug into your blaster coil tabs. So hooking up the Protronics to this is gonna be super duper easy and uh, we'll keep rocking and rolling with the wiring. There's a really cool hole that exists in the um, fender well uh, that was already there. <laughs> you can kind of see through and see where my tire is. And so I'm going to mount the blaster coil underneath here and in just like this. One, it's accessible. Two, it's protected from the heat from the headers. And three, it should make room for the battery since I'm going to use a small battery. But that's kind of a cool spot for it, I think. And then also it's a real short lead to the distributor. Plus it allows me to plug everything in pretty easily over here. You can see I'm starting to clean up the main wiring harness too. It's starting to shape up really nicely. So we'll keep rocking and rolling and then I'll show you uh, what the final product will look like. All right, we got her bolted where I wanted to go. I'm gonna use this to tighten it up and kind of mock up, give me another stage of where I want the wiring to go. But I rather like the ignition box there. Also, this, <laughs> this air thing kind of keeps it cool. So I'm gonna torque her down now and then continue with the wiring in the, of the ignition system. All right, um, I did quite a bit of wiring uh, tucking just now. Well, I had a big harness that was coming through here and I ran it back underneath and around the radiator and then underneath the headlight and then back through here. You can see the connections are kind of bare. You can still see the wires. I haven't wrapped the loom yet, uh, but I did kind of put a placeholder loom on this because this kind of hides how ugly this is, but it looks a lot better. And then what I need to do now is kind of tidy these up, tidy these up so they can all go together. These run to the battery, right? And then I got to finish these going to these down here, red, blue, and white, red, there we go. I gotta finish these coming to here because these are my leads from my alternator that I wrapped around and then this is my alternator hot. So I'll keep going with this and then I think I can wire in the Protronics once I start cleaning more of this stuff up. Okay, this is a lot of wiring for that little box. But every place, uh, every one of these wires has a home and Protronics kind of labeled like this is hot, permanent hot, this is permanent ground. And then all of these other sensors go to things like the igniter or the tack. I'm gonna jump into the instructions really quick and see which of these I need, which of these I don't need. Maybe I can get rid of some of these and uh, maybe I can make a nice harness here. Of course, I'm gonna take these wires and I'm gonna run them the same direction underneath and around. You can see here, there's quite a bit of wiring in there that's not cleaned up. Um, but I, I wanna make sure it's nice and clean before I, I do anything. So I know one has to go to the Dizzy. I know one has to go to the igniter, at least one. And then I know one has to go to at least to the battery. 
and then I also know that from the box one has to go to the tack so let me see if I can make um, make this look nice and tidy before <laughs> before I get too lost in all this wiring cool thing with Protronics is they give you color-coded instructions wiring diagram for igniter two or distributor or three distributor wiring di diagram for magnetic pickup distributor Wi wiring diagram for four spark distributor which none of those I have. I do have a point or electronic distributor. You can see points. So here we go, point distributor. And uh, it's gonna tell you heavy red goes to the battery. Heavy black goes to the battery. The red and black, don't need it. Gray, tack, I was correct. Yellow, shift light, don't need it. Uh, launch limit, dark blue, don't need it. Burnout limit, light blue, don't need it white goes to the trigger wire from the distributor violet and green don't need it 12 volt red is your ignition switch which is great because i could just tap that into ignition wire black and black and white black goes to negative black and white goes to so this is actually gonna be pretty dang easy <laughs> there's a lot of this that i could cut out let me uh, start snipping some of these wires off and capping them off and uh, cleaning up that harness All you wiring guys, drop a comment and tell me what I'm doing wrong because I'm sure there's a million things. I think it's gonna stay there. Cool thing is, running the wire from where it was all the way over here is one, it isolates the box, and then two, it puts all of my wiring right where I need it to be. I kind of fixed the main problem of the 4AG swap, is the entire harness ends up where all the vitals are. I got my igniter, I got my, uh, I guess, uh, main uh, fuse box, I got my distributor, and I got my starter, and my battery right here. And so all the Petronix wiring just kind of ends here. Another cool thing is when I was doing the alternator igniter, which is right here, I don't know if you can see it on camera, I had an extra um, ignition wire that was just kind of hanging out. And it was on a like a resistor on this car when we first got it. Oh, the wiring was fucked, but the car ran. And so I'm gonna use this ignition wire. It might be a tack wire, I don't know. But I'm gonna use this uh, ignition wire to actually made up with the ignition wire request from the Protronics. So essentially, my wiring here is like pretty close to being done. I just haven't even connected anything, but it's all right here. So exciting stuff. Now I have quite a bit of a mess over here, but that's okay. I've done most of the essentials. The distributor's wired up. The fu master fuse box is wired up. It's right here. The uh, igniter's wired up. The... Uh, Harness is extended. It goes underneath. It goes where the radiator is goes into the Petronix. The Petronix is wired up But I mean overall the engine bay looks really clean Compared to what it looked like last time. There are some wires that I got to finish. I got to do the um, Starter wire. I got to do the alternator wires. Actually alternator wires are done. There you go um, And they're down there those little leads and uh, I got to finish finish the grounds but overall, super good. I'm so glad. I love the location of the igniter. I love the location of the master fuse box. I love the location of the alternator relay. And I did some sort of sheath over it, which I'll finish. Yes, there's a little bit of a mess right here, but that's okay because the battery is going to go here. So all these will be tied into a lead somehow. Um, but overall, engine bay is super clean. So some hours left in the day. And I want to do my first AN lines. I have no idea what I'm doing. My garage is freaking messy but I just measured up from the fuel pressure regulator to my uh, one of my carbs and I, I had some spare AN line lying around so I'm gonna try and do my first AN fitting and uh, let's see if I can get some work done today on that I got some AN clamps on the vise cheap Amazon ones 
Uh, I used these last time, and obviously everyone in the comments group like, Mike, those don't work, and they don't. So I upgraded to this to cut my AN lines. And I have some AN line here. I have some brackets here. We'll clean this up. Uh, that I used before. I don't need this. Hey, that's already on the car. Yay! Here we go. And I got really, really, really nice Earl's fittings. The sickest thing about Earl's fittings is they say Earl's everywhere. They say Earl's there. They say Earl's there. And they even say it on there. Which is kind of hard to see. I'm not really close to the camera. And I did AN lines in my Subaru like 10 years ago. And I'm going to try and do this off the top of my head. No YouTubing, no pausing the video. Let's see if I can get it done. And I want to make my first AN line. I know I got to tape it. I know I got to cut it. I know I got to do all that. But let's see if I can uh, give it a go. And if I could bolt it up to the fuel pressure regulator. Because that will really help the engine bay look perfect for this episode. Right now, the A in line has to go into the carburetor vertically because if I go horizontally, or I guess I can go like this, but that's the wrong side, it hits this little plug here. And so I have to make sure the A in line goes in vertically, but by putting it in vertically, it becomes too short. It doesn't hit my fuel pressure regulator. And then same for this, if it goes in ver vertically, it doesn't hit my fuel pressure regulator. I'm just gonna redo that really quick. Boom. Looks like it's the perfect length. Fuel filter go into the fuel pressure regulator. Now I gotta redo these two lines real quick. And the pro tip, make it longer. So the bend won't happen. I think I gotta make it like three inches longer than what I'm having here. I know I need to make my new AN line three inches longer than this one, maybe four. And so I'm just gonna rough measure three inches. I'd say here is a good, is a good, cause I gotta go over. So let's go here. What do they say? Measure twice, cut once. Well, I'm not measuring and I'm cutting. So like, yay me. Okay, that's starting to look pretty good. You got a fuel line going across and down. It's not above the strut tower bar, so it won't hit the hood. We won't get any fire anywhere. And next one will be this, and we are all set. Okay. All good. That's where I'm gonna wrap up the episode tonight. You guys can barely see all the work that just went into that, but we got the fuel lines hooked up. We got the Pertronics hooked up. Well, not hooked up, but mostly wired. 
I got something really, really, really special coming tomorrow or the next day for this area right here. I'm so pumped on it. It's probably the nicest one of these that I've ever bought in my life. I'm gonna save that to the next episode because with that there, hint, 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 we can crank the car over. Uh, all I gotta do is figure out how to get fuel to the fuel lines and uh, hook up the throttle body linkage and I think we got ourselves a runner. So uh, that's it for now. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one. Shh.